In most people's eyes, the idea of being kind to yourself means indulging yourself. Like the wisdom, quote-unquote, on wrappers of Dove chocolate. Go ahead, have the next chocolate. And the idea of being kind to others is basically indulging them, doing things that they like. But if we think in terms of karma, it's very different. Being kind to yourself means looking at your thoughts, looking at your actions, and figure out where are they still lacking. Now, a lot of us don't like to do this. We feel they're coming down hard on ourselves this way. This is why the Buddha prefaced his comments to Rahula about how to meditate with the teaching on making your mind like earth. People spit on earth, but earth doesn't react. Make your mind like water. Water is used to wash away dirty things, but and the water doesn't react. It doesn't shrink away. Make the mind like wind. Wind blows dirty things around and it's not disgusted by them. Make the mind like fire. Fire burns disgusting things, but it's not disgusted by them. Make your mind like space. No one can write in it. In other words, the words of other people or the actions of other people don't have to stay there in the mind. And even as you're sitting here right now, the pain you had in the body just a second ago, that doesn't have to be held on to. Think of it as something written in space. When you can make the mind like this, that's when you're ready to look at what else is going on in the mind. So you can look at things in terms of cause and effect and figure out which thoughts you should side with and which thoughts you should try to get out of. That's why the Buddha talks to Rahula in another sutta about being ashamed of thoughts that you realize give rise to harm to yourself or to others. Shame here is not the opposite of pride, it's the opposite of shamelessness. There should be an underlying sense that you are competent. But also, looking at your mind in the point of, from the point of view of karma again, things come into the mind from the past, and they're going to be skillful and unskillful because you've done skillful and unskillful things in the past. Everybody has. But the question is, do you want to keep on doing the unskillful ones? What can you do to foster the more skillful ones? When you think in these ways, that's when you're really being kind to yourself. You're creating a brighter present for yourself and a brighter future. The thing about being kind to others, again, it's good to look at it in terms of karma. If you can get them to do skillful things, that's the kindest thing you can do for them. And in some cases, you can't tell people or recommend to people, say they're your parents, you have a debt to your parents, and however, they're the hardest people in the world to teach, the least likely to want to listen to your teachings. But you can be a good example. And that's the way you repay your debt. In fact, the practice is one of the ways we repay our debts to all the people who made it possible for us to practice here. Think of all the people who gave so that this building could be built, so there could be food every morning. We have shelter here, all kinds of good things, everything down to the pipes underground. Here's the Gatin had to collect money, and people were saying, well, when are we going to see something built with this money? So all the money's going underground, going into the pipes, all the infrastructure down under there. There are a lot of things that make it possible for us to be here that we don't see. It's good to think about them, and also good to think about the fact that it was all given somebody's generosity. Try to repay that generosity by practicing, by being a good example. There's one forest monk who talked about how people who practice are like lampposts by the side of a road. The lamppost doesn't have to do anything, just sheds light, just do, does its own thing. And in so doing, by giving light, it helps a lot of people. And if your actions are admirable, they give light to the world. Think about all the bad examples that are out there. The 
and all the crazy things where people say about how, well, you should just learn how to accept your base motives and be okay with them. Well, then people then act on their base motives. That's why the world is in such a mess. And you look around, it's not very inspiring. But you see every now and then people who are inspiring. And it's heartening. It makes you realize the human world does have potential, it does have good things. And it makes it easier to live in the human world. You can think of your, your practice as a good example for others. When the Buddha talks about harming yourself, it's basically breaking the precepts or trying to give rise to passion, aversion, and delusion in the mind. Or if they're already there, encouraging them. And if you want to harm others, can you get them to break the precepts or encourage them to give rise to passion, aversion, and delusion? The way to help other people, of course, is to encourage them not to break, break the precepts. Or at the very least, be a good example in what it means not to break the precepts and what good people are like. So that would be a good example. So having gratitude for the goodness of others doesn't necessarily mean doing what they want you to do or pleasing them. If you're really kind to the people who have helped you, you want to be a good example. So at some point they'll be inspired by the fact that they helped you and this is the kind of person you became. I've seen a lot of cases where parents, for instance, were not really originally happy that their sons became monks. But then they began to see their sons were becoming admirable people. And some of the sons' new habits rubbed off on the parents. And that, of course, becomes a real gift to the parents because, then, after all, it is their karma that they're now creating, and they're now creating good karma which is going to be for their long-term welfare and happiness. So doing the practice is not just running away and looking after your, after your navel. You're actually doing something good for yourself and doing something good for the world. The world needs more people practicing. And what's the best way to get people to practice? Practice yourself. And that way your practice becomes a gift to the world.